Kumusta? Ako si Jona. Mayong pag-abot diri sa Bisaya Classroom. Today, we will be learning about Bisaya pronouns. And in terms of Bisaya pronouns, we will be learning two things. Personal Bisaya pronouns and possessive Bisaya pronouns. So I hope that you are ready. Let's start with the personal Bisaya pronouns. By the way, if you don't know what a pronoun is, a pronoun is a word that substitutes a noun. Okay, so here are the personal Bisaya pronouns that we will be learning today. First is I or me. In Bisaya, that's ako or ko. I have also mentioned it on my previous videos that when ako appears in the beginning of the sentence, it will be ako. But when it appears in the middle or at the end of the sentence, it will be ko. Next would be you, singular. Ikaw or ka. Again, ikaw if it's in the beginning of the sentence and ka if it's in the middle or at the end of the sentence. Next, he, she or it. That's siya or sha. We or us. That's kami or me. Kami if it's in the beginning and me will be if it appears in the middle or at the end of the sentence. The same um, process for I, me, and you. Usually in the Bisaya language, the pronoun, if it appears in the middle or at the end of the sentence, it shortens or it changes its form into a shorter one. Next, we have we or us, that's kita or ta. Now, you might be confused what's the difference between these two. Okay, so we and us, that's kami or me, and kita or ta, the difference is when we use kami or me, it will not include you as the speak, uh, as the listener. So when I say kami or me, I'm only talking about ourselves. You're not included. But when I say kita or ta, meaning you are included, us and you, kita, kita, we, or us. Okay? I hope that's clear. You will understand it later on with the examples. Next, you, plural, it will be kamo or mo. In the English language, you can be singular, just you, or you, plural, kamo or mo. Next, we have they for sila. Okay? So, I hope that everything is clear. These are our personal Bisaya pronouns. Now, we will be using them in a sentence. Okay? So, let's start with a ko or ko. So, in our sentences, we will be using only one verb, one action word. Okay? That will be kanta, meaning sing. And then, we are going to use the future tense. So, to make kanta into future tense, we will add the prefix mu. I hope that you have uh, watched my previous videos on changing the tenses of the verbs. Okay, so if you have not watched it yet, I can put the link down below so that you can go to that video later after watching this video. Okay, so let's have the sentence, Ako ang mukanta. Take note of the word mukanta. Our base form of the verb is kanta, meaning sing. We added mu to make it plural. So, mukanta in English, that's will sing. Then we have ako here as our pronoun. I will sing. What is ang there? The purpose of ang is to link the subject to our predicate. Ako, the subject. Mukanta is our predicate. And take note, ang will appear usually when the subject, when the sentence pattern is subject and then verb or predicate. Okay? Subject and then verb. There will be an ang usually in the middle to link the two things. But I told you that the most common sentence structure in Bisaya is verb or predicate first before the 
subject. So, this is the second way to write the sentence I will sing. Mukanta ko. Take note of the difference, okay? We have ako, ang mukanta, subject, then action word. But here, the action word is the beginning. Mukanta ko. And take note of our pronoun here, what happened? It became shorter, the shorter version. So, mukanta ko. It's still I will sing, but the structure is different. And take note again, please let me remind you, that the easiest and most common Bisaya sentence structure always starts with a predicate or the action word. Okay? Next, let's go with you. Ikaw or ka. Ikaw ang mukanta. You will sing. Let's turn it the other way around. Mukanta ka. You will sing. Again, ikaw ang mukanta or mukanta ka. You will sing. Next, siya ang mukanta. He, she, or it will sing. Or mukanta siya. Next, kami ang mukanta. We will sing. Take note, if I am using kami, meaning you are not included. I'm just simply telling you that we will sing. You are not included. Okay? Kami ang mukanta. Now, take note, we have another prefix here for, for future tense. We have mang. Okay? Mang. Mang and mu are um, similar. They are very similar. Mang and mu. But usually, in our language, we usually use the word mang if the doer of the action is plural. So, if there are a lot who will do it or if what we will do includes a lot. For example, if the object will be plural, we can use mang. Okay? Again, mang and mu are similar. You can use any of them. Okay? So, you can use kami ang mukanta, we will sing, or you can say Kami ang manganta. We will sing. And if take note, if you will be using the prefix mang, you will remove the first letter. A while ago, it's kanta, right? So you have to remove K and just uh, re, um, retain the, re, the remaining letters. Okay? Kami ang manganta. We will sing. Kami ang mukanta and kami ang manganta mean the same. Okay? Let's turn it the other way around. Let's start with the verb. Mukanta mi. Now we are using the shorter, short version of the pronoun. Or manganta mi. Okay? Next we have kita or ta. So kita ang mukanta. We will sing. This time you are included. Kita ang mukanta or Kita ang manganta. Or, if you will use the verb first, mukanta ta or manganta ta. Okay? So, I hope that's clear. Next, let's have you for plural. Kamu ang mukanta. Subscribers, kamu ang mukanta or kamu ang manganta. We have the verb first. Mukanta mo or mu manganta mo. Okay? So, I hope that's clear. Lastly, we have sila. Sila ang mukanta or sila ang manganta or mukanta sila or manganta sila. You could, uh, if you want, you can research for another verb like for example lakaw so mulakaw sila manglakaw sila okay you can use other um, action words replace kanta with that action word and experiment with the personal bisaya pronouns that i have already taught you if you have questions you can comment down below okay so that's all for the personal bisaya pronouns Let's proceed to possessive Bisaya pronouns. What's the difference? When we say possessive, 
it shows ownership. So you are saying that it's mine, it's yours, it's ours, it's theirs. Possessive meaning, it answers the question, who owns this? Okay, who owns? It shows ownership. Okay, I hope that's clear. So here are the possessive Bisaya pronouns. For my or mine, that's ako, ako a, or akong. Okay, later I will show you the difference between these three things. Ako, sorry, sorry. Ako, when you pronounce this ako, the stress will be on the first syllable. It's ako. A while ago, the pronoun um, I or me, it's pronounced as ako. Ako. But when you use it as a possessive Bisaya pronoun, the pronunciation changes. It becomes ako. 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 Meaning, mine. Ako. Mine. If you say me or I, you say ako. Ako. I or me. Mine. Ako. Ako. Okay, so I hope that's clear. Ako. Ako a. Ako. Next. Your or yours, it will be imo, imuha, or imo. Next, his, her, or hers, it's iya, iyaha, or iyang. Our or ours, that's amo, amua, among. Our or ours, that would be ato, atua. Atom. So, just um, what I have taught you a while ago, there is a difference with our and ours. Uh, our and ours, that's amo and ato. Okay, the difference is, amo, meaning I am only talking about ourselves, you are not included. But when I say ato, you, the listener, is also included. Okay, ato, ours, amo, Ours, you're not included. Your or yours for plural, that's in you, in you ha, in you. Okay. Their or theirs, that's ila, ilaha, or ilang. Okay. So I hope everything is clear. If you want to take a screenshot, you can, or if you want to write it in your Bisaya Journal, Bisaya Classroom Journal, by the way. Thank you for those who purchased the Bisaya Classroom Journal. Thank you very much. If you want to put it in your Bisaya Classroom Journal, you can. You can post the video. Okay, so let's start discussing ako. Ako a or akong. The difference is ako and ako a mean the same. Okay? Ako and ako a they mean the same. The word akong here is just a contraction. Okay? Ako nga. So, um, if you're going to use this pronouns in a sentence, usually it follows nga. Okay? Nga. Nga is, uh, is a word that you put before the thing, before the object that you own. Okay? So, ako nga. So, to shorten it, it becomes akong. Ako ang nga. To shorten it, it will become ako ang. Ako ang. So, again, ako and ako a, they mean the same. I think it, it just matters with uh, the, I don't know, it depends on the place. But in, in, in Davao City, we usually use ako or ako a interchangeably. Okay, so I just introduced akua there for you not to be confused whenever you hear the word akua in Bisaya conversation. So you might ask, what's akua? But actually, ako and akua mean the same. And when you use it in a sentence, you contract it with the, with the word nga. You just add ng. Later, you will understand. Okay, let's use it in a sentence. So, our noun here, in our sentence, we will use balay. Balay means house. So, our sentence would be, this 
is my house. How will how will we translate it in Bisaya? So we say, "Ako ni nga balay." So I told you the word "nga" there. Okay, it appears between the possessive pronoun "ako nga balay." Okay, what's "ni" here? "Ni" is this in English. "Ni" is this so this is my house this is my ako balay house okay this is my house that's ako ni na balay another sentence ako ni na balay take note i told you already ako and ako a mean the same it's up to you what you want to use um, actually, akua is longer, so whatever you want to use. Okay, next, number three. To say this is my house, you could say, Kini ang akong balay. So, if you want to, um, yeah, the word kini there is ni. Ni, uh, it becomes ni here because it's in the middle of the sentence. Just like what I told you on other pronouns. Ni there, the full form of ni is kini. This, kini. But since it appears in the middle, it's shortened to kini. But this time, the word kini, this, appears in the beginning of the sentence. That's why we use the full form. Kini ang akong balay. Akong is a contraction of ako nga. So, Kini ang ako nga balay. The correct um, way, to, the, the formal way to say it is, Kini ang ako nga balay. But to shorten it, we could say, Kini ang akong balay. Or you could say, Kini ang ako ang balay. This is my house. Sometimes, Bisaya um, people do not... Um, say the complete sentence sometimes we just say the phrase and we will be understood like for example my house so we say akong balay my house akong balay or you could say aku ang balay okay next to say this is mine for example you are pointing to your house and you are saying this is mine you could say aku ni or you could say, Ako ani. Or you could say, Yeah, Ako ni. Or Ako ani. You could use this sentence on anything. Like for example, your bag. So you could say, Ako ni. My bag. Ako ani. My bag. Okay? So it will be the same on the next pronoun. Imo, Imuha, and Imo. Imo and Imuha mean the same. And imo nga becomes imo. Okay? So, I hope that you get the difference between imong versus imo and imoha. Imong is a contraction. So, we'll have the same sentence, but this time, this is your house. Imo ni, imo ni nga balay. This is your house. Or imoha ni nga balay. Or, kini ang imong balay. Phrase, your house. Imong balay. Or, imuhang balay. This is yours. Imoni. Imuhani. Okay, so it's the same with the previous one. Next, his, her or hers, or it's, that's iya, iyaha, iyang. Same thing. Iya ni nga balay. Iyaha ni nga balay. Kini ang iyang balay. His or her house. So we say, iyang balay. Iyahang balay. This is his or hers. We say, iya ni. Iyaha ni. Alright? Next is our or ours. Amo ni nga balay. This is our house. Amo ani nga balay. Kini ang among balay. 
take note when I use amo, you are not included as the listener. Please take note. Okay? Our house. Among balay. Amo ang balay. This is ours. Amo ni. Amo ani. Next, ato. This time, the listener is included. Okay? Ato ni nga balay. Ato ani nga balay. Kini ang atong balay. Our house. Atong balay. Ato ang balay. This is ours. Ato ni. Ato ani. Okay. This time, your, yours. Plural, okay? Inyo, inyo ha, or inyo. Inyo ni nga balay. Inyo ha ni nga balay. Kini ang inyong balay. Inyong balay. Inyo hang balay. Inyo ni. Inyo ha ni. Okay, last but not the least, we have there or theirs. It's ila, ilaha, ilang. So, this is their house. We say, ila ni nga balay. Ilaha ni nga balay. Kini ang ilahang balay. Kini ang ilaha nga balay. Okay, take note, there is uh, the word nga there. Kini ang ilahang nga balay. Sorry, it's, um, there should be nga there. Take note of the word nga. But if you want to remove nga, you can just contract it to ilaha. You could say, kini ang ilang balay. Ilahang, o oh, ilaha ni nga balay. Okay? Their house, we say ilang balay or ilahang balay. This is there, so we say ilani or ilahani. Okay, I hope everything is clear. We are going to have a self-test. So, in this part of the, our video, uh, there will be questions. And you're going to fill in the correct, yeah, fill, choose the correct pronoun to complete the sentences or phrases. So, if you are... Uh, if you forgot some details, you can go back to the video, okay, before you answer the self-test. We have four questions in the self-test. So, if you are ready, you can answer, okay? Their house. So, this time, it's a phrase. It's not a sentence, okay? Translate this phrase. Their house. Blank balay. Is it A, imong balay or ilang balay? What do you think is the correct answer? Yes, the correct answer is ilang balay. You can also use ilahang balay. Or you could say ila nga balay. But in our choices, we only have imong and ilang. The correct answer is ilang. Number two. This time, it's a sentence. Her car is big. Dako ang blank koche. Kotse. Iyang or imo? Her. For the word her. Okay, by the way, I did not... Uh, you, might, you might be confused. Dako is big. Okay? Kotse is car. So, her car is big. So, we are uh, looking for the word her here. Yes. Iyang. Very good. Her, the, her car is big. So, Dako ang iyang kotse. My car is small. Kotse is car. Gamay is small. So we are looking for the word my. What's bisaya of my? Gamay ang blank kotse. Gamay ang akong kotse. Very good. Number four. I will study Bisaya. So, will study, that's magtuon. So, we are looking for the word I. Magtuon, blank, o Bisaya. Very good. Magtuon ko, o Bisaya. Bonus question. I will subscribe to your channel. 
So this time, the Bisaya sentence is incorporated with English words like subscribe and channel. Okay? Mug subscribe, that's will subscribe. Okay? Mug is also used interchangeably with mu. Okay? This time, I did not use mu for will. Okay? We could also use mu subscribe, no problem. But this time, I used mug. Mag-subscribe blank sa imong channel. Imong is your. So, we are using, uh, we are looking for the word I. Okay, very good. The answer is ko. Mag-subscribe ko sa imong channel. If you, do, if you did that, thank you very much. If you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so that you will be notified on my next lessons congratulations you have finished another lesson if you have some questions or you are quite confused you can ask your questions on the comments down below if you want to support this little channel please click the buy me a coffee link down below and you will become a great blessing to our classroom by the way special thanks to everyone who have already purchased the Bisaya Classroom Journal. Um, by the way, I'm very sorry if some of you have misunderstood. The Bisaya Classroom Journal is not actually a textbook. It is a notebook. It's like a notebook. It's like a diary where you will put all of the uh, lessons, vocabularies, and new lessons, new learnings that you have learned from your Bisaya class uh, from your you know bisaya learning so you can place everything there so that you can remember and you can you know track your learning progress some of you are requesting uh, me to make a bisaya classroom textbook it's actually in progress right now and it will be released this coming october so i hope that when it will be released you are going to support me in that um textbook um i will put some lessons um, and I will incorporate it to my previous uh, videos. And I will also put um, worksheets so that you can practice every end of the lesson. Okay, so that's it. Thank you very much for being here. And see you next time in the Bisaya classroom. Bye.